Good morning, good afternoon, um, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to present um, on behalf of MSC and the Enterprise Lifecycle Management um, Business Unit um, the first presentation this year on simulation process and data management in engineering organizations. So what the agenda is, what I will try to do today in this um, 30 minutes presentation is I would like to position first and foremost how simulations fit into a PLM strategy of a company, how the interaction handshakes is between a simulation organization or department with the overall PLM. And with that, I do want to motivate the, um, the requirement of an establish, uh, to establish a consistent simulation process and data management solution at, your, um, at the enterprise. In the second part of my presentation, I will then go more specifically into um, the manager and how it helps in your organization um, to, to, to run more efficient, more transparent, and um, with a higher level of effectiveness, um, the simulation process. And I will conclude this presentation with an, uh, an ROI statement. So let me start off with simulation data management or sim manager within the PLM. So any kind of design, any kind of product design has two key aspects which will be evolved over the product development cycle. It is the product definition, which is typically um, managed within a product data management solution, and the product requirements, which are managed in a requirements management system. These two are the essential documents which define a product without um, the, um, during the development cycle. Now, if you ask yourself, when do you do simulations? you will realize you are doing simulations every time you're taking a set of product requirements and a specific product definition and you're starting to ask yourself questions. Does the design match the requirements? What options do I have to meet the requirements? What are the feasible design options to meet the requirements? In these when you articulate those questions, you basically articulate how to a simulation, a definition of simulation. The interesting part around this is, is when, when I discuss with customers, customers are very concerned about the integration of a simulation data management solution with the PDM environment. And I always try to point out that equally important, maybe even more important, is also an integration or a correlation with the requirements. Because you can do simulations by purely having requirements and no product definition. But you cannot run a simulation without a requirement because you would then not know what are the observables you are actually looking after when you're doing your simulations. So in the PLM, as you manage your product definition, and your requirements. You will have many points where you are trying to put both together and have a question. And in these points, that is when the PLM needs to invoke a simulation data and process management system and articulate a request to this system saying, well, come and, and, and articulate a question. And this is exactly how we position a simulation data and process management solution within the overall PLM. So once you have articulated a solution within the PLM, you pass in the product requirements, the product definitions, and then the analyst starts his work. He models, simulation models, he runs simulation, he analyzes his simulation, he validates his simulation, and when he's complete, he will then file back either into the requirement system or into the PDM system or into another PLM system his results of his observations based on a combination of product requirements and product definitions. This could be either a simulation report or results. This could be an optimized design. This could be um, you know, further um, um, targets, etc. So when you think about this set up within a PLM, what you notice is that, first of all, there is a very logical 
distinct requirement for a component in the PLM managing the simulation data and process. Now, this PLM component is, is not a data management component. It's actually a system which answers to questions from the PLM. So it's a much more dynamic component. And if you're building a simulation data and process management system, I notice in many customers that they are looking very much predominantly only on managing the data, extending a PDM system. We believe this is the wrong intention or the wrong starting point for such a solution. But we need to understand that such a solution really, its value to the PLM is to answer two questions. When we build up such a simulation data and process management system, really the most, as the, the most focus is as the PLM asks questions, it wants answers back in a very predictable, consistent manner. So what such a system should do within your PLM environment is it should make sure that requests coming from the outside are executed by using the best practices, consistent processes, consistent procedures. During the process of answering to the questions, speak running simulations, there will be data generated, and that data needs to be managed within that system. So you have a quite if you look then in the final implementations, you will notice that there's quite some simulation data generated in due course as you're analyzing, your as you're building up your models, doing iterations, doing variations, you are creating a huge amount of data. Now that data is not PDM data. This is work in progress data, which you need to manage during the time you need to answer to your question. You need to organize the data, you need to manage the data. So this is work in progress data, which, is, which needs to be managed in this, within the system. And then once you are ready, you've done your simulations, you can then use the system like the manager to then compile together results, compile together reports, which you then in a very controlled manner can communicate back. So how we see the system is from the outside, any time you have a design and a requirement set and you want to analyze it, that is when there's an interaction, when something what we call in SIM Manager a work request is initiated. And with this work request, the simulation process starts and, the peer, and then the, the answers are communicated back into the PLM once they are completed. Now, to make this more illustrative and to give you a little bit of a feeling of how that looks from a user interface perspective, I do have some screenshots for you. So right here you have a screenshot of what we call our home page. This is the typical page you log into once you, um, um, a user logs into the manager. He sees his home page. And what is outlined right here to the lower left in the red, um, in the red box is a, a, a widget where you can see all the work requests, for instance, in Analyst is, which work requests are, ana are assigned, sorry, for a specific analyst. So if he presses on this link, he will then open another window or another page where he then sees all the data which was passed on from the PLM into the simulation environment with all the design data, all the requirements, auxiliary documentation of how to run the load cases, etc. And then the analyst has actually a very structured starting point for which he can then start his simulation process. While he does the simulation process, what we do in Sim Manager, and this is a different presentation, we track how the data is progressing in Sim Manager, how data was generated, like input decks, results, reports. 
And we track all data points, requirements equally as, as um, design data, mesh data, input decks, results, etc. This can be a very long chain. Right here is a very simplistic short um, um, graph. But what you can do is you can always traverse from your input data to a simulation process to results. Like in this case, you want to you have requirements and you want to see how many reports were generated with those requirements. And you see right here um, in the lower half, you see a table where then the system um, will display to you the reports. And if you click on one report, you can actually open such a report. You can look at it if it was generated automatically. It can be generated automatically or interactively. And these could be then reports which can then be passed back again into the PLM system. Two, give you some reference, I would like to point out that such a strategy of of working with work requests coming from the PLM into the simulation environment and sending reports back. I would like to point out two reference, references of established implementations with SimManager where this full round trip has been implemented. One example is PSA in, in France. They have given a very impressive paper at the last NAFEMS conference in Salzburg last year. Or, for instance, ZF Friedrichshafen AG, which have given a, sim a paper on exactly such a loop um, at the SIMBEC conference um, 2012 in Baden-Baden, Germany. With this very short and I know very fast drill down and positioning of the simulation environment within the PLM and it being in question and answering machine for the PLM. I would like now to go more detailed into the actual solution we are offering right here in simulation data, data process and data management being SimManager. I'll start off to just outline again needs which uh, drive, which, which are important um, or which needs which drive the demand for such a solution. Definitely, if you are in, a, in an environment where you have very many products, many derivatives, where you have many duty cycles, multi-stage simulation process, everywhere where you have bookkeeping to do and you have a challenge of keeping track of all your simulations, how they depend to each other, etc. If then on top there are regulatory environments, liability issues which require you to do a very detailed documentation of those um, simulations and how you have gotten to results, or if you need to do very many optimizations, or if you have really unfulfilled headcounts, you, you need to get your engineers to be very effective. These are all industry needs which actually, re actually demand the creation of a simulation data and process management environment in your organization. What the system does, its sweet spot is it manages, it tracks the data, it organizes your data, it, it un allows you to understand what data was generated from what other data. It manages all your CAE data, your work in progress data, and it helps you to automate or to drive or to manage the whole logistics and governance of running your simulation processes. And then, as I've pointed out in the previous part of this presentation, it closes the loop of the integration with your PLM environment. Now, what I want to point out right here is with SimManager, what we have done over the last three, four years now is in the past, building up such a system, there was in the past always a high demand on, on doing configurations and customizations of the solution. And with SimManager 2012, we have really turned things around. We have set up a mission, and that was in collaboration with BMW, one of our key reference customers. We have set out and said, okay, we do want to reduce or eliminate all needs when building up such a solution of customization. All the functionalities a system requires 
to manage data and the processes should be, like an application, delivered by the product itself, making it possible for the customers in very short time with minimal effort to configure easily a solution which they need for their simulation processes for their simulation departments. This is, was also important for BMW. At BMW, as Srinivas mentioned, I had been working with BMW for now over 10 years. We started off in big departments like NVH and Crash and Build a Solution. Now, with SimManager, four years, five years ago, BMW came to us and said, well, it is nice to build a solution for big departments with 20, 30, 40 analysts. But we have so many small departments and we need a solution where we can also manage data of very small departments which only have maybe two, three people. And, this, and we want to have a system which easily it allows us to configure it for those departments and manage and, and, and give them a solution. Um, for both their data management needs and their process needs. So what does it mean, easy configurability? What does it mean building a solution out of the box? What that means is that, and this is some benchmarks we have set up which we want to accomplish by the manager is, if there is a new discipline, if you're building a new system, it shouldn't require any kind of experts from MSC to really um, configure the solution to support a discipline. So a partner or you as an internal customer should be able to build up such a um, configure the system to your you need. This should happen within weeks, two, three weeks. Integrating methods and tools should also be something which you can do on your own by basically providing very straightforward interface points. And the maintenance of such a solution with any kind of given discipline should be possible by you as a customer or by a partner and not necessarily require um, MSC services. On the other side, what all does also out of the box mean is that we want to establish solutions with you where it is easy to do a very frequent software release update. So, as there are new SIM manager versions coming along, it should be easy for you to upgrade to a new version. It should not become a horrendously big services project to migrate from one SIM manager version to the next, as we sometimes or many times witness in the PADM world. What that means is our strategy is, is that all functional aspects Every functional need you have for simulation data and process management will be delivered out of the box and we will then and you will be able to configure it to adapt to your needs, to your processes, to your flow you have in your respective organization. Going a little bit into the features, I, I will be skipping over some key points right here. Is there is a very straightforward import and export framework we will be providing with the manager which allows you to very easily pull data in and move data out. Something I would like to point out right here for the import and export is typically in the simulation world when you do something outside, you're not dealing with one, two, or three files. You sometimes have many files, many complex directory structures where you have organized your meshes, your images, your input decks, your loads, etc., which you need to get into the system. So this framework allows you really, it has parses, it has logic, which traverses through directory structures, understands where the data is, how it is related to each other, and then pulls it in and, and, and basically like a vacuum cleaner is allows you to pull in the data into SIM Manager and in the same way allows you to also then extract the data out again so that you can build a directory structure which you might, for instance, need to run some simulations. So SIM Manager has a very configurable import-export framework which allows you to do your to, to 
import your legacy data and also to still maintain manual work outside of the system, but have easy means of getting data back and forth, getting data into the system and out of the system. On top of this, what we have is we have a framework which allows you to easily integrate interactive pre- and post-processor tools. So the interesting part around here is what we can do with this integration is you can formalize the process of, okay, if you do an assembly process, I take this assembly node, I launch this preprocessor with this session file, with this automation interactively. I do the assembly and then I load it back into the manager. By integration of, by this means, we in the manager will automatically track the data dependencies so we will keep automatic bookkeeping of what data was used in which interactive session to generate which other data downstream. And by that, the manager handles the pedigree without the user having any kind of additional work. Going forward, I've just talked about interactive manual simulation processes. Now, what we can also integrate in the manager in a almost identical manner are not only interactive processes, but also batch processes running on the HPC. We have a very standard interface points, which is very engineering oriented for people which write scripts, which allows you to, and it has very clear distinct interface points, which are highlighted right here in those yellow boxes for individual steps of a standard simulation process, like solve, post-processing, report generation. And you can integrate your methods and tools within these processes. You can also, we have then very standard frameworks to launch such processes in the HPC. So essentially, SimManage represents something or is, is something which allows you to do job submission and job uh, automation very easily. What we can also do is you can then also expand the automation forward in the pre, into the pre-processing world by, for instance, allowing to import models and then running also batch interactive processes. Or, and this is what we do with a module called simulation generator within the manager, or then even allow you to run very easily multiple batches of simulations like permutation of load cases and permutations of, of, of model configurations, et cetera. What we do hereby, and this is the main, is this is a key point, which is, which takes a little while for you to very clearly understand is that while we're doing this, we're not only managing the data as data objects in the system, but also the methods and tools. So we provide to you a very generic workflow, and you can then, in the same way as you are importing data objects, you can import your methods and tools into the system and manage them. You can revision control them. You can exchange them, and automatically SimManager documents those changes. So. In the manager, not only data, like models, input decks are data objects, but also methods and tools like scripts, like applications. And it tracks with which, which models you used, with which applications, with which scripts to generate which other data. And this is all interlinked together within the system. And it allows you really to update your workflows, evolve your processes. And this might be another important aspect, is something you know, and this is, a, I think, a key difference to, for instance, the PDM world. You know in five years you will do simulation totally differently than you do it now. What we have when you build up a simulation solution is what you have to deal with is with a constant evolution of your methods and tools of your processes. So you cannot statically configure such a system. You essentially need a solution where you can constantly update, modify all your scripts, all your processes, all your templates, all your application versions. 
Um, by the way, I got just a very fast question. What is HPC? HPC means high performance computing. It means in the background when you run on the batch site in solver run like Nastran, Mark, and you just submit it into a high performance compute cluster. This is what I meant with HPC in one of the previous slides. Sorry that I didn't um, define that acronym. With that, I would like to move on and highlight a, another key aspect when you build a simulation data and process management environment. So what I have explained to you is, is that we have a framework where you can very easily import, export data, where you can integrate applications, where you can run processes and automatically sim manager audits that data. Now, what that allows you to do is when you build such an environment, it enables you to actually run more and more simulations, to do more and more permutations. So the system will create or will enable you to create more and more data. And what that means is if you have more and more data, you somehow need to organize, you need to kind of like understand the data. So right here we have the simple example of the simulation generator. So you have different subsystems which are assembled together and you run different load cases. In this example, you have four models or subsystems and three load cases and you multiply and you run all those simulations creating tons of key results, tons of images, curves, values, etc. Now, to organize that data, what really needs to be built into the system is a general framework which then consolidates all that data and allows you to build and aggregate clearly clear reports which you can then communicate back into the PLM or which you can use to analyze the simulation results. So what is needed once you have such a system in place? And what we notice is one of, a, of the huge strengths of SIM Manager is the fact that you not only manage the data, run the processes, but you are able to then digest the data and put the data that is into the system in a very understandable form of a report which you can share with your process partners or can share with your PLM. With that, I'm coming to the end right here, and I just want to highlight again the audit trail, which is one of the key backbone core architectures within SIM Manager. So what you have is right here in this diagram, the system monitors exactly which models were used to create, like CAD models were used, CAD files were used to create meshes, to then create input decks, which then run simulations, create results, and then those results are compiled together into reports. And this documentation is done un unambiguously, consistently, and there's a clear dependency. So you have a clear causality of the data. So what data was used to create what other data. And this organization is very important. What you will notice when you use a system like Sim Manager is you will be navigating very many times within such graphs, like what is depicted right here in the slide, to get from your models, to your input decks, to your results, to your key results, to your reports. And to close the loop with my previous section on, on work requests and integrating within the PLM, so what the manager does on the, on the data tracking side is as design data is imported into the system. The system tracks how you build up your data, your model, generating the results, and what reports you're feeding back into the PLM. So it does the full bookkeeping. You have clear transparency. Okay, this was a PowerPoint report I have submitted for a specific milestone point in the design, and I can exactly trace back to which design states were used to generate those reports. This organization, this, this management is provided by the manager. With that, I want to go to the ROI. So 
One key point I would like to mention is it, it is a combination of both data and process management you need to address when you're building up a system. We believe if you focus only on data management or if you focus only on process management, you, you are missing the synergetic effects and you, you are actually, you will be limited in what you can accomplish with the system. So on the data management side, and right here we, we add one metric of an ROI, which is productivity increase, which is, which is one metric. There are, of course, other metrics. You have purely on data management the productivity increase so that you have all your simulation data, you have your metadata for easy search, you have your audit trail, you, have, you can manage libraries of data, material libraries, and you have effective ways of importing and exporting data. On this other side, you have productivity increase by integrating processes, by really generating much more comprehensive, bigger data, by automating standard tasks. And right here, we just gave numbers right here for the productivity increase of 35%, productivity increase of 25%. And exactly the combination of both is really which adds the value and creates the synergies and really allows you to exploit all the aspects which you need to exploit while you're building up such a solution. And if you're only focusing on data or only focusing on process management, you will lose the value and, uh, and the return of that respect fact. With this, I want to close. It was only 30 minutes, so I'm sorry if I needed to rush through um, this presentation fast, but I want to say in German, danke, and open up for questions and answers.